Ooh. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dave D Fishing. So in this video, I'm gonna be fishing closer to my house in the back bays um, using the Rebel Jumpin' Minnow. And I'll get to uh, more specifics about this thing in a minute. But so it is June 30th right now. So at this time of year, back bays are getting warmer. The silver sides have moved in. I'm up in near Boston. So the silver sides have moved in and completed their spawning in the eelgrass. So now they're just roaming around in big schools. Um, these silver sides range from anywhere from three inches up to six and sometimes larger as the end of the summer comes to a close. So August, September, they're pretty large. So we also have aloe wives, baby aloe wives falling back down the herring runs. So you have a lot of stripers out in the back bays of Boston right now. This year, there's not a lot of pogies around, which is excellent. So people don't have to, there's not this crazy traffic over near Boston, near Nut or not Nut Island, um, Deer Island and those areas over there. So the stripers are a little bit more spread out. They've been more, um, there's been more consistent action with slot size stripers near my house over here. Um, and I imagine at night, there's definitely some overslots, really nice fish, over 20 pounders near my house. Um, so sorry about the lack of fishing over the past week and a half. Um, I've had my left shoulder popped out and ruined the top part of my humerus. So I'm having a hard time adjusting to that. And obviously fishing isn't really good for it. Flinging baits and moving the kayak and that type of thing, but I'm trying. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you how to use this Rebel Jump in Minnow. It is really easy to use, um, really cheap lure, and it is very effective. Um, it is excellent for this time of year when there's a lot of small baits around. You use it for stripers, um, bluefish, provided you use a, provi a good leader material, and I'll get to that in a minute. You, don't, you can use steel with this. I don't recommend it because I think it would affect the action of the nose of this lure. Um, I just use fluorocarbon. It seems to work fine. I'm using lighter equipment with this, um, my Albi fishing rods, 3,000 reel, um, seven foot rod that's rated up to an ounce. So I believe this Rebel Jump and Minnow is three quarters of an ounce an ounce, so it's more than enough. So um, easy fishing, especially this time of year. The stripes are tucked up close to the banks of these eelgrass beds. They're hanging out at the mouth of these little creeks that are draining into these bays. They're easy to find. So. Um, look for the the schools of silver sides that look it looks like ner they call it nervous water um, just because of the top of the water shimmering um, and also this is taking me a couple of years to realize but when I'm out there in my kayak when it's a little bit like there's a little shimmer in the water from the wind you could actually look for I call them funny spots I know it sounds bizarre but it's actually this really calm spot and all the shimmering of water, that's actually, this on sunny days, that's actually the stripers sunning themselves. So I'll cast right near these fu these funny spots and um, I'll start working my lure in and usually I'll see a boil. It's It's been a pretty good method for me. Um, I know it sounds bizarre, but like I said, this I'm fishing on flats that are probably three, four feet at most. So it is very easy for these stripers sunning themselves to disturb the surface and um, Makes them a lot easier to find and it's fun on light tackle. So, all right, let me tell you about this Rebel Jumpin' Minnow. It's, I believe it's the four and a half inch version. It's in bone. Uh, I usually only get two colors either, um, usually a light and a dark. I'll keep it simple, white, and then um, either a black or purple or really dark blue. It's, it's, it doesn't get any simpler than that, guys. All right, let me show you this lore. All right guys, so here is an up close and personal with the Rebel Jumpin' Minnow. So this is a four and a half inch version right here in the bone color. So as you can see, I switched out two single hooks already. So these are the VMC inline hooks. So these are specifically for switching out um, trebles to singles. So a couple different reasons why you'd want to switch out to single hooks is because um, obviously it's better for the fish. So you're not getting another four prongs into the fish's mouth, their gut or whatever, the side of the face, their eyes, this is much safer for them. And also simply because when you're handling a fish, there is uh, with the lure still in its mouth, it's obviously less chance for you to get injured, get a hook stuck in you and end up to the emergency room or 
having to have a buddy or yourself yank those hooks with barbs out of your hands while you're out fishing and ruin your day. So here's a look at the packaging. This is what I use for the four and a half inch jump in, Rebel Jump and Minnow that I'm using now. This is the 2.0. Um, these come in pack as, packs of seven. I don't know why. I don't know why they just don't come with an even number. It's I guess it's so you buy another pack, but these were six bucks, so not too bad. Um, I always keep a bunch of packs of these single hooks in here, but it's sort of a mess. But um, yeah, so you need split ring pliers to obviously pull these off and you want to orientate the the hooks to look like so. So they're like this, just like that. Um, so I went with the 2.0 hooks. I always check and make sure before you put them on that they don't touch when you're casting because obviously that's going to tangle and you're not going to hook fish like that. Um, that's really, it's pretty simple. This is a really nice lure. It's easy to cast. Um, I only go, when I buy lures nowadays, I only buy a lighter color and one dark, darker color. So I'll go with the bone. Always have a bone colored lure in my bag if it's a, um, a hard bait. So bone, and then I even go blacks and purples on my other ones. Um, I don't believe in buying all those in between colors. Um, I don't see, I haven't seen a difference as I've gotten older and fished more. So um, yeah, so this is what it looks like in a nutshell. I've caught a bunch of fish on this already. No blue fish on it yet. Um, so you see some hook rash. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's just from the actual hook riding around the edge. So um, no big deal though. Eventually it will wear through and this thing will start leaking and probably crack off. But these Rebel Jumping Minnows, they're not expensive. So I don't seem to care too much. They, I believe this one was like 10 bucks. So you can't go wrong with that. Um, so with this particular four and a half inch lure, um, I always use um, some sort of obviously a leader. So I, you never, I never tie directly to braid ever. So I'll use, um, this has 20 pound fluorocarbon it's a pretty light lure. Um, I don't anticipating anticipate on catching large fish with it, anything over 36 inches. So I do perfectly fine with 20 pound fluorocarbon. I catch albies on it, um, all kinds of stuff. So I have utmost faith in this that I won't snap anything off provided I do my job and work the drag right, work the fish right. I shouldn't have a problem. Aside from maybe a bluefish grabbing it and cutting it off, or maybe just getting too abraded by striper. Stripers do have little um, like sandpaper teeth in their mouth, and if the fish is large enough to engulf that, it will abrade the fluorocarbon, and over time it will fail. So keep an eye on your leader material. Um, fluorocarbon, I'll hold it up to the light. And obviously if you start seeing a lot of opaque areas, switch it out, it takes two seconds, and you save yourself a lure and possibly having a fish swim off with um, hooks in his mouth. So um, so got the leader fluorocarbon, and then I have a little swivel on here. This is a, I believe a size eight swivel. I think that one's right up to 50 or 60 pounds. So that's more than enough. Um, then I have, believe it or not, this is 15 pound Power Pro Super Slick Line Blue. Um, I can't tell you how many large fish I've caught on 15 and 20 pound braid. Um, I've caught, what was it last year? I caught a bunch of albies on 15 pound braid. If you don't know what albies are, they're a little tiny tuna, but they pack a lot of punch above their weight. So um, they're little tiny tunas and they fly off. They're like usually the ones I caught last year are above 10 pounds and 15 pound braid more than enough. Like I said, you need the skill to bring these fish in. Um, obviously your body is part of that drag system. You, it's not all the reel itself with the drag components in there. It is you controlling the tension of the drag, you controlling the rod and letting the fish run. And there's, there's some sort of, there's a suspension effect from the tip of the rod, your arms, your back, everything. Um, so it is very dependent on success on how you pull these fish in. So 15 pound power pro braid, little, sorry, little 3000 reel on there. You don't need, I don't need to go crazy. I can still get these, work these fish in pretty quick, even if they're larger. Um, in this video, I pull in, I think like a couple 20, like something near a 28. Um, and in my past videos using the same setup, like I said, pulled in 10 pound um, false albacore albies as we call them up here in the Northeast, no problem. Um, 
even last year in the Cape, I pulled up, I think a 34 on this. No, absolutely no problem. So benefits to using a lighter weight rod. So this is a seven foot um, Tsunami Carbon Shield 2. It is an excellent rod. I believe it's 120 bucks. It's seven, yeah, seven feet. It's perfect length for the kayak. So I could still reach around the nose of the kayak and I have to reach around um, behind me towards the um, back of the kayak and swing the fish around. So it's plenty long enough and it's not too cumbersome to cast on the kayak. The butt end of the rod is plenty short enough and it's a light, it's a lightweight setup and that's all I need. Um, and also if I'm fishing farther out and I know that I'm gonna be encountering multiple species, I can switch the baits out and go bottom fishing if I want. And I don't have to bring multiple rods with me. It works excellent. So um, let's see, in this rod, let me see, it is rated up to, doo -doo -doo. so it's rated up to um, one ounce. So it's more than enough for what we're doing and what we're flinging as far as bait. Um, let me see what else. I think I got everything on there. Lore. No, oh yeah, this is a Daiwa BG 3000 reel. Beautiful little reel. Uh, my only complaint with the reel is the hand, the actual knob itself. I wish it was one of those power knobs. I don't know why they just don't do that for all the reels. Probably more expensive, but um, that is a huge creature comfort. So um, that's pretty much it. So let me get into the fishing and I'll tell you how I'm working this topwater bait. So this right here is a prime example of why you do not hook until you feel weight on the fish. So fish missed it once keep retrieving is normal Sheesh. and I missed it twice. If I were to have one. hooked that close to the kayak, I got a little too excited that hook Spiteful probably would have ended up fish. in the kayak or um, hooked would have ended up in me or tangled and I don't feel like dealing with that. Keeps missing it, which is fine. So Look pulling it. it back out, steady twitch of the rod tip at this pace. You can change the um, timing of twitches as you need. So you see He's I right paused there. just Come to give the fish time to come up and grab it so and you can see a little bit of the walk to do walk the dog action as it's coming in but like I said earlier you can change up the erraticness of this lure the faster you twitch it um, it becomes more erratic starts darting and actually jumping out of the water which it's intended to do and it um, attracts a lot of attention from these fish angry little fish over here this spot I'm about to cast to is one of those quote unquote funny spots that I see when the water's a little choppier and there's a clear patch of calmer water in that. Feels lucky That's right where there. the fish have been like cruising around spot. and disrupting the waves themselves or just sunning themselves and doing the same, disrupting like the water. Um, this has proven to be, um, helped me be more successful oh, in my lucky. fishing when targeting fish on shallow flats. I knew it, I felt it. All right, if you notice during this cast, chuck it out, and I'm actually twitching the rod a little oh, bit more, crazy. and I'm holding the tip higher. That's because of the chop, and I want to make sure that lure stays on the top, and also with the erraticness that um, it's yeah, making more noise, and I feel like there. it's overcoming the noise of the water itself. Ooh. Ooh, that was a better fish. There's actually two separate fish that attempted to hit this thing. Huh. Ooh. Huh. I'm not sure what the size of this one is, but I guess we'll see. Hmm. Might have to... There you foul beast. Oh, oh, all right. It's actually a bigger striper than I thought. That's definitely a keeper. Or maybe, I'm guessing, maybe 27, maybe 27. Right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be letting him go, even if it is a keeper. Oop. That was a cool hit. I actually saw, yeah, I saw two separate fish come up and grab this thing. Yeah, I know, Braid cut your hand, I, I get it. Thanks. Very good hit, fish. All right, come on. Yep. All right, sweet. All right. 
I'm just curious what the size is on this thing. Hey buddy. Uh, 26 and a quarter. I was just curious. Yeah, these fish aren't very, um, a couple weeks ago they were very chunky and happy looking. These ones are a little thinner. Come on, bud. There he goes, happy fish. Oh, it's hmm. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's a little stripe. That was a very cool hit. <laughs> like a 23 inch bass. Not very big. Come on, kid. <sighs> that was a good bite you gave. Very good. There you go. Uh, nice little bass. He's, he's pretty much ready to go. All right, here we go. There he goes, good. Very good. So with this thing, check it out. Twitch the rod tip. And that's really it. And this thing will dart oh, pretty hectically on the top. Um, and attracts attention, that's really it. So this is just a schoolie. But yeah, that crazy motion of this, um, well, let me see, where is he going? Of this rebel jumping minnow is the magic in it. I love this thing. And definitely switch the hooks out to singles, that's all I can say. Yeah, cookie cutter size of the last one. Come on, buddy. Yeah, all kinds of hooks in your mouth. There you go. Yeah, he's pretty much ready to go. But yeah, nice little fish. This one has a lot of like lesions on it. It's weird. Huh. Where there's one, there's more. Oh, like that, there's one right there. I'm gonna slow it down. See if he'll come up to it. Nope. It's the same fish, I bet. Oh. Yeah, cookie cutter fish. But these fish on light line in the bays, you, you really can't beat it. Well, I guess you could, but I like it. 
because not everybody the reason why i do these videos is because not everybody can afford to go out in a boat all the time not everybody has a ton of um, opportunity to get out after work so back bays are pretty accessible for most people up here in the area that i live <clears throat> and they're easy to launch from so Nice bite, my little friend. Oh, that's a scrawny striper. I need to go eat something. Besides my lure. There you go. Oh, good. good bite, good bite. Yeah, they're over here. So the wind's blowing in the direction that I'm casting, so I imagine it's blowing all the bait down this way, so that's why I'm fishing down here. I think out of the 10 casts, I already caught three fish already, so it's pretty good. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Come on, slow it down, slow it down. Oh! That was close. Looks like there's more than one fish over there. Oh. Yeah, there's definitely more than one fish. Ah, I see an osprey up there. I do have my pogey snag and stuff with me and I do have a heavier rod, so... And I have circle hooks, mind you. I see something, but I'm gonna carry on with this... ...little top water right here. It's a good search tool. Ooh, I see some funny water over there. I couldn't... Yeah, it's close enough, I guess. I think I just saw a pogey jump out of the water. Oh, there we go. Yeah, another diaper striper. Yeah, I think I saw pogies clear in the water over there. Oh, that's a small one. Try and get this thing off the hook quickly. You made it to the end of my video on how to use this Rebel Jumpin' Minnow. Um, it's a four and a half inch bone color. There it is. Switch that to single hooks um, just to prevent injury, worsened injury to yourself or fish if you happen to have this hook fly into your body somehow. Um, using the 2 hooks, the VMCs, very sharp, very good. Um, so very easy lure to use, very good for the kids to learn how to fish top water. Um, you could use light tackle with it, that, which lends itself to younger angler, anglers figuring out how to fish with it. Um, yeah, pretty good lore, pretty good search tool for searching for fish that are actively feeding topwater. Um, good for you that like to 
vis see the, the visuals of a fish smacking a lure. It doesn't get any more exciting than that. So if you like this video, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you.